What's up you guys, Avery here, and welcome to a deck profile I have been wanting to do for quite a long time now, ever since the Flunderies archetype got revealed in the OCG, and now we finally have all the cards that we needed. Yes, we spent a shit ton of cards, we spent $1,080 on a case of Burst of Destiny, made a good bit of money off it, I would say we pretty much broke even off of it, maybe made a little bit of money, um, but we got pretty much a whole Flunderies core, uh, plus a couple other things. Uh, and then I just went out and bought the rest of the stuff I needed, and uh, yeah, our wallet is still crying a little bit. So guys, be sure you hit the like button, be sure to smash that subscribe button, because uh, we're coming back to YouTube slowly but surely, um, and we're going to be doing some daily uploads again very, very soon. So, a couple quick things I want to note about the build here. Uh, there is some things I'm waiting on in the mail, it's mostly side deck things, but one thing I'm missing for the main deck is still two copies of Book of Moon. Uh, so you're going to see one copy in this deck profile, but I am actually playing three, and I will mention that once I get to the Book of Moon. Um, I was also originally playing two Planet Pathfinder, and two Flundery City of Dreams. I saw uh, the core TCG regional build that just topped like yesterday, and literally the only thing that was different was that he was playing four tributes instead of three, and then he took out one City of Dreams and two Pathfinder for three Imperm. So if you notice similarities between this build and that one, that's why. <laughs> so let's go ahead and dive right in. You're playing three copies of Flundery's Rabina, uh, your level four or lower Stratos of the deck, and then you're also playing three Eaglin, which is your second Stratos of the deck. Um, you've got to play three of each of these. I've seen some people play two of each. You've got to play three. I feel like that the current Flunderies map, uh, lineup that we have is going to be standard for a while until we get Journey Preparations and Battle of Chaos in 2022. We're playing two copies of Stretch. It's your DD Crow. And we're playing one copy of Toucan. Um, you can get back your Banished stuff. If, if you have the map, you can use the map to reveal this. Banish Unexplored Win, summon this to get Unexplored Win back. It, it's a cute card. You really don't need more than one of it. Uh, and then we are also playing three of the Broken Dimension Shifter. I love this card. Um, little pro little pro tip. Big brain plays here. Um, activate this in the draw or standby phase. I don't care if it's your turn or the opponent's turn. You don't want your opponent getting off the Triple Tactics talent because I have made that mistake. I'm not afraid to admit to that by playing this in the main phase as soon as they activate something. But no. Um, just activate this at like the draw or standby phase so that their talents is suddenly live. And then we're also playing one copy of the Barrier Statue of the Storm Winds. Really, really good. Doesn't really do much in the Lear Lucic or Tri Brigade matchup. Um, it just pretty much stops them from going into Zeus. And it really, even if like they're just able to summon a monster and get around it, the fact that they have to waste their battle phase is really, really good. Because then they have to go into main phase 2, still deal with the M-Pin, and then they can't activate any monsters that they special summon in attack mode. So, um, I've seen some people cutting the Stormwind. Uh, I personally still really like it. For our tributes, we're playing one Empin, one Ryza, and one Apex Avion. So, let me explain my reasoning behind this. Um, Avion is pretty standard. Ryza, a little fun fact, I saw a listing on TCG Player for 40 I bought this, and then it instantly shot up to 70 and now they're sitting between 60 to $70, so I definitely plussed. Um, and then Empin, you know, I've seen some people playing four tributes. I have bricked with four tributes, and I just never liked four tributes in testing. Three has worked for me. Um, and my reasoning has also been, if the Empin goes to the grave, you can use Stitch to banish it, and then Toucan to get it back. Um, so it is recyclable in that sense. Um, I have been testing more with four tributes. I see why it's good. But for the time being, I think I'm going to stick with three tributes. Um, but if you want to test and make this a 41 card main deck because it is 40 cards, throw in a second Empin and see what you like. I even test around with four tributes, but instead of playing two Empin, I would do these three plus like a Dark Sign Ward just to give myself more, more options. I even tested with a second Apex Avion too, and uh, that seemed to be pretty good as well because then, you know, instead of going into Empin on turn one, you go into Avion, then you're the opponent's turn, you go into another Avion, well, now you got two negates. So there's a lot of different ways you can mix and mash your uh, Wing Beast tributes. Um, so definitely have some fun with this here, but I personally just like three tributes at the time uh, of making this video. Uh, I even tested Snow. I don't really care for Snow. Um, I think Empin is just the better one. So, but that's for that's it for that. And then we're playing three copies of Book of Moon. Uh, one copy Dimensional Fisher. I'm really tempted to cut this because it's like I'm already playing three fucking D Shifter. Why do I need a fourth copy? <laughs> like it, it, it's it's good if you go first and you go on with D Shifter. It's like you're playing a fourth copy, but I don't know. It, it doesn't progress your game state. This deck can already brick enough as it does. Like, I'd say 
uh, for me to open up a playable hand, like we're talking maybe 85, 90%, but those 10% times where you brick, I mean, it's a brick, and this just not, this doesn't do anything for you. It really doesn't. Uh, we're playing three copy of Magnificent Map. You've got to play three copies. This card is so busted. The fact that it doesn't just banish monsters, it banishes any Flunderies card is, is just so good. Uh, and then we're playing the Bane of Mystic Mind's Existence, one unexplored wind. Uh, I've had people tell me you can only tribute monsters. Nah, man, you need to read the card. It says send a card from the opponent's field to the graveyard. And here's the cute thing. Even if you activate a Dimensional Shifter, you can still use this card's effect to send one of the opponent's cards. It'll just be banished instead of going to the grave. So that's a little interesting uh, tidbit to keep in mind there. Um, a lot of people forget that you can send up a two Wing Beast from your hand at the bottom of the deck in any order and draw two new cards off the top. That has come in handy a lot, especially when you're trying to unbrick your hands. Um, but when you open up your high tributes and you don't see this, it really sucks. So that's why... That's why I only like playing three tributes. And we're playing one copy of Call by the Grave, one copy of Gold Stark, one Terraforming, and then, as you saw right before I play some down, we're playing the three pot of Prosperity and the three pot of Duality. So, for those who are probably cringing right now, because if you've been a fan of this channel for a while, you know that I buy whatever deck I want to play and then sell a shit afterwards. Uh, yes, this was expensive as fuck. Um, let, let's get the obvious out of the way. Uh, 132, 135, and 135. Um, yeah, the, I ordered these two from one seller and then ordered this one from another. Homeboy literally put tracking on these, and, and I don't blame him. Made me sign for it and everything. I don't blame him one bit. Shit's expensive. Um... I've seen builds play extra. If you can, if you have extra, sure, play extra. But if you got prosperities, you really, really, really need to play prosperities. It's just that good. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. It's just that good. Uh, for the traps, we're playing three infinite and permanent, three solemn judgment, and then the one copy of City of Dreams. This is recyclable. Um, you can get cute with playing multiple copies because when you have it set and then you activate it to normal summon a level 4 lower wing beast, that's not once per turn. The only once per turn is banishing it from the graveyard to flip all the opponent's monsters face down, but it's not a hard once per turn. Just activate it and get out of normal summon. Um, so there's some cute interactions you can do with that, but again, with Stitch and Toucan, you can banish it from your grave or even banish it off of its effect and then get it right back with Toucan so it's recyclable. Um, side deck, that is what we were missing some cards for. So, for the side deck, you should be playing three Nibiru and two Lightning Storm, and then we have the rest of the stuff here. So we're playing one Feather Duster, as I said, two Lightning Storm, uh, three Twin Twister, three copies of Dark Ruler No More, and three copies of Evenly Match, and I just mentioned the Nibirus. Um, you can really do a lot of different things with a side deck when it comes to Flunderies. Um, the build that topped in the core TCG Regional yesterday, he was playing Dark Symorg in his side with three anti-spell. Um, that's a little cute thing you can do, like going into game two or three and just lock the opponent out of setting cards. I've tested it. Um, I don't really think it's for me because I feel like I have a bad luck in Yu-Gi-Oh with back row bullshit. <laughs> so I love just having all of the side decked hate in the world for back row uh, because I feel like back row is just the bane of my existence. Um, the extra deck is really whatever you want. Um, I'm going to quickly go through it here. Um, it's, yeah, like we're, we're just playing a bunch of bullshit. We're playing three Win Pegasus at Ignister because. You know, why not if they hit you with a Maximus? Um, yeah, and then Fortress Dragons for the Cyber Dragon matchup, I guess. I mean, if this was a let's make it as optimal as possible side deck, or excuse me, extra deck, then yeah, we'd be playing Zeus, we'd be playing a Tri Brigade Ferret Blossom, we'd be playing Shirag, we'd be playing Three Ints, um, you know, things like that. If you're playing the Dogmatica build, then your extra deck matters a bit more. Um, but as it stands with builds like basically pure Flunderies is what we're doing here, then you really don't have to worry about your extra deck, which makes this deck a kind of budget. Not really, because you need Prosperities. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But anyways, you guys, uh, that is the Flunderies deck profile. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is Are you excited for more support coming in Battle of Chaos? Because I can already tell you this build's going to change once we get three journey preparation. I've already got a build uh, set in stone to play once we get journey preparation because that card is fucking bananas. If you don't know what it does, just look it up. Um, it's really, really, really good. Um, you pretty much don't even have to play Book of Moons unless you want to. But, I mean, Journey Preparation just dodges hand traps for you. You don't have to have map or a Flunderies banished to 
chain block because you already have the chain block in your hand. So anyways, guys, I feel like this deck's going to get better with time, especially once we get journey preparations. Um, it's definitely a good investment moving forward. Rises are expensive out the ass. So if you didn't pick them up now, you might want to trade for them or do whatever you can to get them. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.